Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on this Thursday the 30th of July. Gosh, where's the month gone? Uh, Psalms this morning are Psalms 14, 15 and 16, one after the other. 14, 15, 16, the Old Testament is 1 Samuel chapter 12, the whole of it. We've got a nice load of difficult names. <clears throat> and the New Testament is Luke 22, uh, verses 47 to 62. We'll also give the colic for <clears throat> um, Wilberforce. It's his, the day we remember uh, William Wilberforce, the social reformer of the 19th century, the abolition of slavery. <clears throat> So we remember him in our prayers as well. So morning prayer uh, for Thursday in ordinary time. You've circulated the sheets, so if you want to pull them out, please grab them now. <clears throat> o Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> the night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> and our Psalms begin with Psalm 14, number 14. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they and abominable in their wickedness. There is no one that does good. <clears throat> the Lord has looked down from heaven upon the children of earth, so that if there is anyone who is wise and seeks after God. But everyone has turned back, all alike have become corrupt. There is none that does good, no, not one. Have they no knowledge, those evildoers who eat upon who eat up my people as if they ate bread and do not call upon the Lord. There shall, there shall they be in great fear, for God is in the company of the righteous, though they would confound the counsel of the poor, yet the Lord shall be their refuge. Oh that Israel's salvation would come out of Zion when the Lord restores the fortunes of his people. Then will Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. <clears throat> and so to Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may rest upon your holy hill? Whoever leads an uncorrupt life and does the thing that is right, who speaks the truth from the heart, and bears no deceit on the tongue, who does no evil to a friend and pours no scorn on a neighbour, in whose sight the wicked are not esteemed, but who honours those who fear the Lord. Whoever has sworn to a neighbour has never and never goes back on that word, who does not lend money in hope of gain, nor takes a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never fall. And Psalm 16. 
Preserve me, O God, for in you have I taken refuge. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, all my good depends on you. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble in heart. Though the idols are legion that many run after, their food, their drink offerings of blood I will not offer not offer, neither make mention of their names upon my lips. The Lord himself is my portion and my cup. In your hands alone is my fortune. My shrine has fallen in a fair land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel, and in the night watches he instructs my heart. I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. I shall not fall. Wherefore, my heart is glad and my spirit rejoices. My flesh also shall rest secure. For you will not abandon my soul to death, nor suffer your faithful one to see the pit. You shall show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> and so to our Old Testament reading, <clears throat> first book of Samuel, chapter 12. <clears throat> And Samuel said to all Israel, Behold, I have hearkened to your voice in all that you have said to me, and have made a king over you. And now, behold, the king walks before you, and I am old and grey. And behold, my sons are with you, and I have walked before you from my youth until this day. Here I am. Testify against me before the Lord, and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Or whose ass have I taken? Or whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? Or from what hand have I taken a bribe to blind my eyes with it? Testify against me, and I will restore it to you. <clears throat> they said, You have not defrauded us, or oppressed us, or taken anything from any man's hand. And he said to them, The Lord is witness against you, and his anointed is witness this day, that you have not found anything in my hand. And they said, He is witness. And Samuel said to the people, The Lord is witness, who appointed Moses and Aaron, and brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Now therefore stand still, and I may that I may plead with you before the Lord concerning all the saving deeds of the Lord, which he performed for you and for your fathers. When Jacob went into Egypt and the Egyptians oppressed them, then your fathers cried to the Lord, and the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, who brought forth your fathers out of Egypt and made them dwell in this place. But they forgot the Lord their God, and they sold him into the hands of Sisera, the commander of the army of Jabin, king of Hazar, and into the hands of the Philistines, and into the hands of the king of Moab, and they fought against them. And they cried to the Lord and said, We have sinned, because we have forsaken the Lord, and have served the Baals, and the Ashtaroth, but now deliver us out of the land of our enemies, and we will serve thee. And the Lord sent Jeroboam and Barak and Jephath and, Jephath and Samuel and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side, and you dwelt in safety. And when you saw that Nahash, the king of the Amorites, came against you. You said to him, No, but a king shall reign over us. 
when the Lord your God was your king. And now, behold, the king whom you have chosen, for whom you have asked, behold, the Lord has set a king over you. If you will fear the Lord and serve him and hearken to his voice and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, and if, you, and if both you and the king who reigns over you will follow the Lord your God, it will be well. But if you will not hearken to the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then the hand of the Lord will be against you and your king. Now therefore stand still and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Is it not wheat harvest today? I will call upon the Lord that he may send a thunder and rain, and you shall know and see that your wickedness is great, which you have done in the sight of the Lord in asking for yourselves a king. So Samuel called upon the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day, and the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. And all the people said to Samuel, Pray for your servants to the Lord your God, that we may not die, for we have added to all our sins this evil, to ask for ourselves a king. And Samuel said to the people, <clears throat> Fear not, you have done all, that, all this evil, yet do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart, and do not turn aside after vain things which cannot profit or save, for they are vain. For the Lord will not cast away his people for his great name's sake, because it has part please the Lord to make you a people for himself. Moreover, as for me, far be it for me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you, and I will instruct you in the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart, for consider what great things he has done for you. But if you, but if you still do wickedly, you shall be swept away, both you and your king. Here ends the Old Testament reading. <clears throat> and so to our canticle. <clears throat> I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I have given you as a light of the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. <clears throat> and so to our New Testament reading, Luke 22 verses 47 to the to verse 62 47 to 62 while jesus was still speaking there came a crowd and the man called judas one of the twelve was leading them he drew near to jesus to kiss him but Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And when those who were about him saw what would follow, they said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. 
Then Jesus said to the chief priests and officers, <clears throat> Then Jesus said to the chief priests and officers of the temple and elders who had come out against him, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the, dark, and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. Peter followed at a distance, and when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a maid, seeing him as he sat in the light and gazing at him, said, this man also was with him, but he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, Certainly this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are saying. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. <coughs> Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I've called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I've called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I've called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. You promise, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. And so to our prayers. On this day, we remember and give thanks for the life, witness and leadership of William Wilberforce, the social reformer of the 19th century, for his determination in the abolition of slavery movement. We pray for modern slaves of today, those who are illegally trafficked, and are virtually slaves. We pray for all who work with those people, for the work of the Salvation Army in finding safe homes 
in which to hide people who have been liberated. We pray, Lord, for all who may get caught up in such illegal trafficking. We pray for our broken world, a world full of war and violence. Pray particularly for the Yemen, for the ongoing conflicts in northern Iraq and Syria, for the violence across our world. We pray for peace, for those living in refugee camps, for those who are displaced and on the move. We pray for our churches and for our diocese, for David, our bishop, Mark, our suffragan, our Archdeacon David, Aaron Dean Nick, and for the clergy of this area. We pray for our church, St. Mark's, giving thanks for the hard work of our wardens and those keeping worship going online. We pray for the COVID-19 pandemic, for the lifting of restrictions that people may remain safe. There may no, be no more rising in the risk rate of infection. Pray for those who are still in lockdown or shielding. For those trying to get away on holiday to get a break and some rest. For our shops and industries at times to restart and for our schools as they plan the beginning of the new term in September. <clears throat> we pray for those who are sick, naming in the silence of our hearts and holding before God people of concern to us. Lord, surround and uplift all who suffer that they may know of your healing power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the faithful departed, praying particularly for those who've died recently or for those whose years mind fall at this time. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. And in a moment of quiet, we pray those things on our own hearts as we hold them before God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the collect for Wilberforce. God, our deliverer, who sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to set your people free from the slavery of sin, grant that, as your servant, William Wilberforce, toiled against the sin of slavery, so we may bring compassion to all and work for the freedom of all the children of God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray as our Saviour taught us, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sin, sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you for joining me.
Uh, it's good to have company for morning prayer. And I hope you'll join me again, same time, same place. All being well next week. Hope to see everybody in church in the not too distant future. Take care. God bless. Have a week.